we have with us Ms. Anuja Kapoor, uh, who is a famous criminal psychologist, criminal lawyer, and a well-known activist, or rather a social activist. She is also an honorary special police officer to Northwest District of Delhi. She is a founder of NGO called Nirbhaya Ek Shakti. With this brief introduction, I welcome Madam to this particular show. Thank you so show. much. Yes. Madam, today we are celebrating Women's Day. Uh, if you see our Indian culture, women have already, always been given a place equivalent to God because most of our God, goddesses are more powerful than the male gods. Yes. So is it right for Indian culture to celebrate a day as a Women's Day or is it that it's always a Women's Day in India? What is your opinion regarding this? First of all, I would like to say ki why it was a need to bring up a Women's Day. We have to focus on this. Why it was a need which came up to bring up a one day for to be celebrated as an International Women's Day. Why? Because the women, they felt that in the period of time of 69 years of an independence, they are still not independent. The respect, the dignity with which they see the goddess, they don't see the human attire. They don't see that, that dignity and respect in humans, in female body. They still feel that goddess and a female body are two entirely different perspectives. So to celebrate the human female who is separate from the goddess, in male's eyes, Women's Day was being celebrated. So that you honor the woman at least one day in your do you think that celebrating a day as a women's day would bring in a change or is it that the mother who has to bring in that change in, the, in her children so that the next generation knows that both of them are equal or is it the upbringing which is important rather than celebrating a day as a women's day? Now, this is a very good question which you asked which has always been my starting line, my pickup line is that empower a woman and you empower a generation. You empower a man, you just only empower a man. So when a woman gives birth to a child, she does not give birth to a male or a female or a boy or a girl. A mother gave birth to a child. When we understand this, we respect motherhood. But the problem is our society is not ready to accept this. They either want male or they, want, they don't want female. So there is a differentiation, there is a ratio problem. Now when we talk about ratio, how would a woman need to be treated? Because if we need to empower a woman because she is the first generation who is going to teach the child, who is going to be just a toddler, you know? As a psychologist, I believe that the education starts from the womb till the five years of age, which all the psychologists believe in that. But that, not only this, it works, it works with the society, it works with the geography, it works with the environment, it works as a nature and a nurture, which is very important. And if a woman is uneducated, if a woman is not happy in the home, if a woman is being trodden upon, is being, um, uh, violence is being done, assaulted. Do you think that woman can bring up a child who will be good in relationship in near future? Or who could be taking out a stable children? No. So what we need is, we need to understand that a woman needs to be loved. She needs to be wanted. She is another human being. She needs to be understood because she is going to give birth to an exact new generation and who needs the culture, the values, what you will give it to her, she will pass it on to the other child. So that is really important that we not only celebrate Women's Day only one day, let us make it every day, go back home, understand See your mother, see your sister, and look at the woman herself. I would even say the punchline comes in 
when a woman needs to stand with the woman so that she empowers why only men empower a woman it has to be a woman who understands because the woman is giving birth to another woman also so it is very important that we come forward leaving our jealousy leaving our things behind in discriminations and we make a good future a good healthy environment a good world where we stand with women and men they stand with us helping us in the in this uh, the whole run the whole path of life now the <coughs> the new term that's in vogue is one is she is a feminist hmm. she is a women's right activist <coughs> so on and it has become a fashion sometimes to just oppose each and everything in indian culture hmm. like i'll give one instance uh, raksha bandhan hmm. is one instance they say that women uh, feel inferior when uh, she, she ties a rakhi to a brother hmm. telling that mera raksha karo i don't know the hmm. history behind it or so on hmm. so what's your take on raksha bandhan and the issues or the fight related to that i really don't understand why our society make everything so in a confusion why everything is been related to some dramatic incident raksha bandhan is raksha bandhan it is a love and a bond between a brother and a sister tying the rakhi and not tying the rakhi will not you know uh, uh, leave uh, the bond between the between the two so there is nothing why do we put these thoughts even in the mind of the two people so basically our society is very confused they put the thoughts in the mind of the other person and the other person retaliate there is nothing which is called as equal or not equal we were born in the same country we were born in the same environment we were born in the same world and the procedure is also the same then the the blood everything two eyes one nose everything is the same so only what we are looking into is the female body and a male body is different how we perceive things is little different but that doesn't mean that we are different we belong to one society we are a citizens again we are not male or female we are bringing up children we are not bringing up male and female we are sitting with colleagues we are not sitting with the male colleague and the female colleague it is very much ready to understand that you have to understand what a bringing you want to bring up in you in the future generation so raksha bandhan will not define a male or a female please i would not even mind if a male will put a rakhi on my hand and i will be protecting even if he is protecting me or not protecting me he will remain my brother and i will remain his sister one more debate that's going on is uh, representation of women in the front army front because yeah. air force and naval already have uh, people from uh, women in them but uh, going in staying in the bunkers and going to the front is always a difficult issue and that's the reason uh, even the top officials of the army said that they usually do not deputy <coughs> women in the front but there has been cry telling that it's uh, discrimination against women mm -hmm. so what's your take on that I think let the women decide on this. Why are the officials and all are deciding? She is capable enough or not capable? Let her decide. She will leave the job. She is not capable. Why everybody intervene and then create a confusion again? The job does not specify. It requires a male or a female. It should not specify. It is on the capability. of the male or the female who's going for the post it is the post you are looking into you are not looking for a male and female post we are looking for the post i'm sorry again too much of confusion so what we are looking i'm not, I'm, I'm, a, i'm a panelist i'm not a male or a female panelist i'm a panelist you are interviewing a panelist so rather we talk about we talking about a post and that post should be taken care of with the capability if you are capable even if you are a male or a female if you are capable for the post please go ahead 
you would be paid the same amount of money, the same because this is all in the law, as I'm a lawyer also. It is all of the remuneration, equal remuneration for equal pay. It is there. So it is not about the about the male or a female. It is about why do we create so much of panic around for the unnecessarily creating a confusion in the mind of a woman by degrading her that she is weaker or lower. Even if I will even say you something, sir, you will put it back to me. So I don't want to create only, I don't want to start that dialogue with you. When I make you inferior, why should I make you inferior? Uh, the next issue is about advertising. So there are two issues that come up when I talk about advertising. One, especially the fairness creams, if you see. They highlight uh, that if, cream ten, uh, if you use this cream, you become fairer. Your skin gets fairer. Is it that it's a, a di discrimination against the women who are a bit darker? Or should it be allowed and let the market decide? And the next issue is about using women as a commodity. Uh, her presence is not required to sell a particular product, but she is commodified and uh, commoditified and she is sold along as a product along with the product in a particular ad. So what's your take on that? Now first question first. Now talk about the the fairer skin. So why a woman needs to have a fairer skin? Let's put take up this. Again, our society has brought this concept that a fairer skin is being acceptable in the society. You will get married soon. You will have a lot of boyfriends. You will be accepted. That's a norm they have made. Bipasha Basu. She's, she's dusky. She's husky. There are many other women who are dusky and husky. Shouldn't we be more concentrating on the, on the capability of the woman rather than going on what her face looks like? So the question is, uh, should we bring a law to stop that? Or is it the market which has to decide? Or is it, it, is, it is, a, it, it is a, a, allowed to go on naturally? That, it is, like, a, again, like, I would say, as in, uh, if, I'm not an economist, but I, if I say rightly, it is a demand and supply. Okay, let the economy decide or economics decide. Uh, yes, th this is what is happening. Because where there is a demand and supply, even the breeding of the, you know, the dogs and, you know, the, the skin is being taken out, crocodile skin. Where there is a demand and supply, the market will criticize, discriminate between, because then the market decides about the product. It is not the, it is, it, 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 it market decides because they want to launch something new in the society every time. It is the market who is deciding that they don't like some kind of a particular kind of a, 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 a face or some a color. So they would like to keep on because they have to sell their thing in the market. This, the cup is orange in color and, and the next time this is going very good. Next time I've said I want to put a green color in so this. So you mean to say that let the market decide and we will just ignore it. There is no point in bringing a law or... Every woman, every man are beautiful, handsome and good looking. You should be comfortable in your own skin. If you are not, there is a psychological issue problem in you, not in the society. Don't endorse it. The things which you are not ready to endorse, don't endorse it. In the same way, this is an answer to your second question of a commodity. A woman wants to be there, that's why she's being used. It is the entirely on women that she should be objecting it. No law can help her. No law can bring this uh, thing in between that she should be going in there or not. She should understand that if she thinks that this can bring something to her in benefit or not, or whatever she thinks in going before the, uh, uh, in, in that ad or something. It is, if it requires, then only. It is, it is definitely in, in, in your catch. You can, have, you can easily say no. You can easily can say no to many love scenes, to kissing scenes, to any, any things which you are not comfortable in. <coughs> I would say if I would, I would be asked to put, I am fairer or not or this. If I am asked to put, if I don't endorse it, I won't go it. So it's all my will. It's your will. Let's put it in it's the consent. Nobody can push you. You know, if you don't have a consent to something. 
So I would not say that it's just a which to uh, I think women should not cry on that that we are using as a, we are being used as a commodity because nobody is picking up from the home. We are coming forward by our own way because if we want to do it, we are doing it. If we don't want to do it, nobody, nobody can make us do it. So <clears throat> I would say the woman needs to be at front. She should decide for herself that she wants to do it or she doesn't want to do it. So no director can force her, no producer forces it. She must be in the need of a money or some problem is there at the back or something which is asking her to even sell herself in the market for prostitution, for, for, for organ donation. She does that. There are many issues. You must have seen the national award winner. She, when it was uh, <coughs> Sunny Learning was there in the market and she started getting into prostitution, this national award winner, she was an actor. And then what happened? Because no longer uh, the director and the producer were casting her, but her money income, you know, that, that uh, uh, the thing she wanted to have it in the market, yeah, uh, the expense she had was much higher and she couldn't cope up. So what was the easy way to do it? That she went out there. But it is not that we cannot categorize every woman into this as we cannot categorize every male as a rapist. So it is really important to understand that it is always in the hands of the woman. She can fight back. She has that capability. She is very, very powerful. She is stronger and she is courageous. If she says that she has to say no to something, she has to stand and she will say no. There is no law who can bind her or who can say anything. It's your will. If you want to do it, you go ahead. Then there should not be no questions asked. Then if you know that you are doing it, you go with it. Uh, the next issue uh, is uh, related to the Section 377 and the LGBT uh, rights. Uh, there are some people in the society saying it's a psychological disorder. And some people argue that it's a medical problem. And some people say that it's a natural way, but it's a taboo subject and people are not talking about that. And this particular law has to be repealed. So what's your take on that? I think uh, sometimes when we are uneducated, unaware, these kind of things happen. Now, I would not say that this was never been there. It was there in medieval period also. Uh, like rape was even used to be there, commodities even used to be there. So these things were never in, you know, they were not, not in open. But now as the globalization has taken place, uh, people have started coming out. FIRs have been launched. Uh, more um, uh, rape issues uh, people are addressing and they are talking about it. And they are saying, no, we don't want it, we want this, we want that. Women issues are coming up. In the same way, this is also coming up. There is a paradigm shift, but it is not that big a shift. There are people who have, who want that they are happy and they feel that they are not good in their own body, they are trapped in their own body and they feel from somehow, from the very beginning that they should not be this what they should be. Again, it is about, I think they have started understanding their body much more than you and me understand. So maybe, it are things because I have not done a research on that where I can totally counter them because that would be not right. That I would counter that area. So homosexuality and lesbians, they have these feelings for each other because they feel that somewhere down the lane they are more comfortable in that person's presence. And the love they feel for them is much more higher than they feel it for the other person. And I think, again, a law can decide this. Not, no law can decide this. It is something which is there. It's just this, it has come into open. At first there was no law. Now you will make a law. And then what will you do in the future? So the thing was there. It had come into open. The pedophiles, they know they are pedophile. But how would they talk about it in the open? It's very difficult. It is like homosexuality and lesbian. They can't talk because they have a children themselves. 
how will they talk to, how will he or she will explain to the other spouse that he's a pedophile the pedophile is again a personality <coughs> it's a disorder where you're not able to make yourself understand that you have a liking for children and then you see your own children but then you again you want to go out and you hunt because you're a predator so there are personalities which come up like this so it's very difficult that we would counter something <coughs> i think we are in an age where we should start understanding them rather than countering them let's do everybody should understand and research and understand why this person is going and doing this rather than countering them or rather than subduing them so it is very important bringing up laws is not important now is to understand a person why this criminal convict and accused or a homosexual lesbian a normal person has been gone to such an extent or doing something which the other person who says i am normal is not doing so we even don't know what is the definition of normal anymore because sometimes there is a new normal now there are lots of rape cases happening is it a psychological problem or is the problem with the upbringing or is it the law and order problem so how do you treat it okay again i would say that it is not that a lot of rape cases are happening the rape cases have started been reporting they were been happening before also they are still happening in rural areas also this is not about clothes because there they are wearing sarees it is not about clothes because again we keep on taking was even if the burqa is there it is an attraction which goes fatal it is again as a psychologist i would again put their personalities which are working and there are various kind of personalities so when a person who becomes a predator he has this thing inside him he has that feeling and it is not only this because from the birth till his his the, the minute he under starting understanding himself i'm again telling you they are very much understanding their body their mind their you and me they understand themselves they know that what they want so when their raping is been done they at that time they don't want to go into right and wrong it is an instinct which they follow and they want to have it so do you think that bringing out some stricter laws would prevent this you it means you are saying uae doesn't have rape laws they have strict laws they cut their hands they cut areas so you think uh, there would be no rapes happening out there it means then there would be zero rape laws or there should not be no rapes every law is absolute in itself there is no need for any stringent law to come if the implementation and the, uh, the understanding of the society we need more counselors we need more psychologists we need more psychiatrists to understand the behavior of the <coughs> of the perpetrator so that we can diagnose them accordingly and a reformation can be brought miss anuja kapoor's personal side of it madam you have been uh, traveling throughout and uh, giving ted talks so what goes behind the preparation for these talks okay the uh, the preparation comes from the education which i have not only with this but with the knowledge i have the knowledge i attained it i struggled i worked hard i am not only a um, 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 a daughter or my mother i'm a i'm a wife i'm a home taker and i'm a professional and this all has helped me in preparing myself because when i speak to the when i when i carry my society with me because i am a society so when i carry my society me along with me and then i speak to my cases and i try to understand them and their problems educate me i can give them my knowledge but then their problems educate me 
the experience which I take it from them because that is an individual experience which I gather from them and that experience is what I bring in front of you all when I gather everything with my knowledge with my preparation I present it to the society that which should be taken it up and understood how a victim or how an accused feels why you are a mother you are a wife and you play multiple roles in the society so how do you uh, balance this what's the uh, secret behind the parallel processing of the various aspects or the personalities i think um, i'm god's favorite child he made me like this and um, my husband my children my team they are the ones i should be thanking to who have unconditionally they have been supporting me and their love has been towards me i would give my entire success credit to my family my husband who has been so patient enough to let my dream come true even when i was married and i had kids this kind of an understanding really helps the person to move ahead in life and achieve the dream recently your son amit <coughs> has uh, written a book on acid attack victims is it that you inspired him to take a cause of women so is it that your upbringing and you are fighting for women might be that when behind him to take up this cause i always say a mother is the first teacher of the child so what you see is the values which has been inculcated in my children and being a social activist and a firm believer i have not only given myself selflessly to my family but i have given it to the society also that is an introduction which my children have gathered from their mother and i'm so happy that my league is been taken forward a mothers league is been taken forward in the future in the society and i applaud that and i'm really really thankful to amman that he um really feel something for me in his heart and he has taken up the such a passionate subject such a sensitive subject to the society and coming to the last phase of our discussion uh, what's your message to the <coughs> youngsters of this society i don't i would not discriminate between men and women young people of our country i would uh, like to put through uh, to everybody um i would not only say for young but i would like to put for everybody that where there is a will there is a way and i have seen that destiny turning in my own hands i have done it i'm doing it you are a ceo of your own life don't let anybody choose happiness for you be head strong go ahead see what you want in life but be disciplined this is really important because there has to be a difference between me and the animals i have cultured myself being into global globalization i still believe that there is some indian culture still inside me the values with which i have come up so i would say that go ahead for your dream always remember the path even if you are at the top always remember the path because that will always make you what you are today thank you madam it was a pleasure